Today on the podcast, we are talking about the power of forgiveness and how it helps you have a long-lasting and satisfactory relationship. It's a hard thing, but we're going to show you how. Hello again, and welcome to Foreplay Radio Sex Therapy. I'm your host, certified sex therapist Lori Watson, author of Wanting Sex Again, and blogger at Psychology Today and WebMD. And I have with me Dr. Adam Matthews, my co-host, who's a couples therapist, psychotherapist, and president of NCAMFT. Foreplay is dedicated to helping couples keep it hot. Thanks for listening. Now on to today's topic. All right, Lori. So today we are talking about forgiveness in relationship. This is a difficult topic, but a necessary one, I think, to helping couples be able to have long lasting relationships, but also great sex, right? It's all bound into one when there's a lack of forgiveness in a relationship. Good sex is hard to come by a right. lot of times. Without forgiveness for old hurts, it's almost like it forms a block. I mean, mm. I think especially we see this when we're talking with couples in therapy and things are going along and then suddenly there's this trauma um, yeah. or betrayal that they had earlier in their life experienced with each other or one of them did that to the other and it comes up and you're like, okay, you know, how, of course you're not able to have yeah. sex when there's this big boulder in the road that keeps you from really going down, you know, going down freely together. So. Yeah. And a lack of forgiveness, it, resentments just build up over time. No relationship is going to be free of hurt or things that we inflict on each other. Um, and if without that, grudges start to build up, resentment starts to build up. And I think you're absolutely right. Like it's, it is a literal wall that gets created between two people that can be hard to overcome without this. And so we want to kind of just talk to you about it. But there's I don't know if you know this, but there's a lot of science about forgiveness. A lot of people that have studied this really deeply and they have found some things about when forgiveness is present in relationship versus when it's not. Right. And so they found that if there is forgiveness present, that couples who practice forgiveness, that one, their relationship is longer and more satisfying over time. They're attached right? romantic relationships. Yeah, they yeah. they are attached. It does it promotes secure attachment. Um, and so it's their relationship is going to last longer and it's going to be more satisfactory. Mm -hmm. But also what a, one of the things that I found interesting is that people actually live longer. Mm -hmm. Right? That you, it can be correlated to a longer life if you pr regularly practice forgiveness wow, um, in your amazing. relationship. I, but it makes sense, right, when we think about it, is that forgiveness also often – a lack of forgiveness is oftentimes talks about – some. we metaphorically talk about it in terms of rotting away our insides, mm -hmm. right, but that it does have a physical effect on us as well. It's like without forgiveness, our soul kind of contracts and yeah. – and we're not as, you know, open, right? I mean, that bitterness can create all kinds of dysfunction to manage right. those painful feelings, everything from addiction to, Absolutely. you know, uh, social isolation. I mean, all sorts of things that happen when you don't forgive that lead to lack of health. Yeah. Literally. Well, I mean, you were talking about a couple of things, too. They're uh, like behaviors. And that's one of the things they found, too, is that when there is forgiveness in relationships, that you have a better ability to regulate your own behavior, mm -hmm. right? So that means you have better impulse control. You have a better ability to uh, make informed decisions, to not react emotionally, to feel in control of what you are doing. Those things are we have a better sense of control and efficacy in our in our own body and in what we're doing when there when forgiveness is is possible mm -hmm. and when it's it's present i believe that yeah the other thing that we have is just a higher motivation positive motivation towards our partner and you that that one you can see right that's a pretty obvious one is that when forgiveness is present i i have better intention toward my partner i have more motivation to toward the goodwill of my partner, right? That I am more motivated for their good when forgiveness is present. And we know that that, that becomes a cycle, right? Oh, I yeah. mean, you know, as we feel that we want to be intentionally giving and toward our partner, that usually with most people makes them want to give back to us. And But when we're holding back because of something that we're hurt over, then that creates the negative cycle, right? I can't, yeah. I can't give to you because you owe me, because you did this to me, and 
And, you know, maybe the partner does or doesn't know. Maybe it was a big or a small betrayal. I mean, there, yeah. there can be all kinds of things that we don't forgive. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's just that that grudge, we're letting that go. And so we are breaking that cycle, that the negative cycle that you're talking about. And forgiveness keeps us in that positive one, mm -hmm. um, which just those things just create a snowball effect. Right. And that's what that's what the some of the research on forgiveness is saying here is that that snowball effect just builds like forgiveness just builds upon itself and keeps us going in our relationship. And then it increases our emotional attunement to each other. This is a John Gottman concept where he talks about that our ability to know what we are feeling individually and then being able to share that with each other and attune to the other person's experience, mm -hmm. right? Like that we're more in tune and in line when forgiveness is present, um, which is crucial. What she has found is crucial to satisfactory relationships. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. The attunement is no longer blocked. You know, mm -hmm. we're not harboring resentment so we can we can get on the same page with our partner. Yeah. And Gottman is so smart. So, Adam, what happens, though, if we don't forgive? Well, a lack of forgiveness, you can kind of extrapolate from some of those things that you talk about. But there's some specific things that the research says is a lack of forgiveness creates in relationships. And one is it makes resolving conflict way less likely. Yeah. So I, I'd love to talk about this one yeah. from a couple that I had. They had a conflict and there was a big wound. And I, I think um, one of them had had an emotional affair with another partner. And this had, you know, this was three years later and there was no way that they could resolve any conflict. This kept coming up and coming up and coming up. And just when they would start to resolve one aspect wholly different of their life, it was like that wound would be broken wide open again, and it would be kind of used as, but yeah. I can't trust you. I can't trust that you will do what you say, even though you've, you're have you saying that we're going to get through this conflict, and you're going to be different now. You know, this time you're going to tell me where you are. You're going to, you know, bring home the money or whatever it is. It was like, sh you know, she, it was the woman. She just could not get over it. Yeah. She couldn't trust because she hadn't forgiven, and I think in truth, he hadn't repaired adequately. Yeah. You know, it's it's a two-part process. And I, I would like to say we know, and we'll talk about this, but we know that forgiveness is not a magical wand. It's no. not just saying the words, the magic words, I forgive you, and it's all done. We know that it's a process yes. and that it's deep. So what else does the science it, say about the— Well, let me just add real yeah, quick before okay. we go into the more of that is that it's also not forgetting, Mm -hmm. Right. We're, we'll talk about that, too. But it is not a uh, I, I hear a lot of people say, well, if if I forgive them, then I'm just going to forget it and we're never going to talk about it again. Mm -hmm. Right. It's not a forgetfulness um, that is happening there. So in that. But what you're talking about there in that couple is that it's not just that they can't resolve the conflict, a new conflict that they have, but they're creating more conflict for themselves. Right. And so it's it is that cycle again where it, a lack of forgiveness has caused them to continue to have unresolved conflict, a lack of repair. But it's also creating new ones because in those new fights, they're re it's more attachment injury. It's it's other things, other words that are being said that are hurtful, other ways that they are injuring each other that they're going to have to have forgiveness for as well. And so that it's just it builds on itself. And I think the other thing that the research says is that I think is really interesting, and this comes from the Mayo Clinic, it's, is that it's, there's an increase in all of these different negative markers for life, right? So more angerness and bitterness, which seems obvious, but depression and anxiety, right? It actually increases depression and anxiety oh, sure. in, in folks, which we can kind of extrapolate there as well, right? Mm -hmm. um, but then an interesting one is two things, a lack of meaning or purpose in life. Right. Oh, that forgiveness yeah. is correlated to not feeling like you have a purpose. Your life is purposeful, which well, I find to be really interesting. You know, I think the lack of forgiveness represents an injury, you know, an unresolved injury. And so, of course, like if if our partnership is disrupted, it's really hard for us to focus outside on our purpose. Hmm. You know, the two things that make us happy in life are the person and the purpose. Yeah. You know, Freud says love and work. And so if our love life is disrupted, I mean, it's very hard to focus on something else and get anything done because this other injury preoccupies us. I think that's a great way to talk about it, too, because it's it turns our attention inward 
to this thing that has hurt us, mm-hmm. right? And I do think we we have to, we talk a lot about, you have to know how you're feeling. We're not trying to ignore it. Forgiveness isn't ignoring it, but it's also not a preoccupation with it. It gets us out of that preoccupation, which helps, which like you're saying, keeps us from being able to focus on any kind of purpose. But then it also, when we are preoccupied with that hurt, it takes away our conne- our ability to connect with others. Mm-hmm. So not only is our primary relationship with our partner injured, but our relationships with friends and community supports, they're injured as well. Right. Yeah. I mean, lack of forgiveness, I think my husband likes to say, is like thinking about the other person while you're drinking poison. Yeah. Because you're actually, you know, hurting yourself more than you're hurting them with right. your lack with your resentment and lack of forgiveness. Yeah. But we know, I mean, we're not saying to do this magically, right? We're not saying no. to do this without processing with your partner or forgiving somebody who has no intention of being different, you know. Right. And and I think there's a difference between when we're talking about people that are actively working to repair relationships and people that are abusive or people that are harmful, that cross boundaries. Those people we're not talking about that. Forgiveness doesn't always mean that the relationship is repaired. Right. right. It doesn't mean that there's a reconciliation of the relationship, but it does mean that you're able to live forward and move on from this. And it also doesn't mean I think this is helpful because people get this confused, is that it doesn't mean that it's an automatic thing that happens as soon as you're hurt, mm-hmm. right? There there are things that you have to go through, processes you have to take, steps you have to take to heal yourself, to understand what's happened, to understand how you're hurt, to be able to identify the emotion that you're feeling, to be able to know if the other person is safe, right? Mm-hmm. To repair from that if you don't know that. Like those are all things we have to go through before forgiveness happens. And forgiveness doesn't have to happen until you're ready for it to happen. But it is an important component in relationships. And so at some point, this is what you would work toward to be able to repair the the injuries, to be able to move forward in the relationship. I think that's smart. Let's come back and talk about Ben and Jill and some other points that you have about our forgiveness and how important it is. So we want to remind all of you that we are thankful for the way you've shared the podcast. We continue to grow. It is our greatest honor when you share with a friend the work that we're doing in trying to help people uh, reframe their sexual life in a way that is understandable and not so mysterious so that they can make positive changes and strengthen their marriages and their partnerships. And I think the last thing we'd like to say is both of us are doing intensives. Um, Our summer schedules are getting filled up. So if you would like to work with us, let us know and call our centers. You can find us at foreplayradiosextherapy.com. And if you like what we're doing and want to help support us, we'd love for you to rate and review us on iTunes and be super helpful for us. So thanks for listening. So we're back, and you have a couple that you wanted to talk about. Um, Ben and Jill, can you tell us about what happened and how forgiveness played into this? Yeah, and I think this is a common thing that happens in a lot of relationships, right? Ben has started to feel a lot of resentment and anger towards his wife, Jill, because he found out that she had been communicating with several ex-boyfriends through Facebook and direct messaging apps and hadn't told him about it, Ooh, right? Mm-hmm. Which is, I mean, that is obviously, let's just acknowledge, that's a harmful thing, mm-hmm. right? It's a hurtful thing in relationship. And so he has the right to feel hurt by this, that she hid this from him. Right. Um, she's apologized, accepted responsibility for actions, which I think, let's just highlight, is an important part of forgiveness. If somebody's not doing that, it's hard for that to happen. But she's apologized and accepted responsibility, but Ben has just been unwilling at this point to forgive her. Um, But recently, two months prior to talking to them, Ben just grew more and more angry and upset and become uh, more demanding in his sexual pursuit of Jill, right? Mm -hmm. Because he's kind of using sex to try to repair the relationship. So when she's not sexual with him Uh or interested in it, he sees that as kind of another repair, another furthering of this idea of, of things that she kept from him. She, in turn, obviously, the more demanding he's gotten, the more shut down she is sexually and emotionally. 
but then he also starts to want to know this kind of grows, right? And it builds on itself to where he begins to want to know who everybody that she's communicating with, what, who she's texting, wants to have passwords to her accounts and everything, and then begins to he, know exactly where she is even when she's not with him, right? Mm-hmm. So obviously this is spiraling. Yeah. What is it? I mean, what, what are the things he says to you about this? He might say things like, you know, they, I, she says that they're just friends, but I'm not stupid. I know that it's more than that. I know what men want um, when they're communicating with women. Um, he would say things like, I just can't seem to get over my feelings of hurt and anger, especially that she did this behind my back. He might say stuff. I've tried to let it go, but it just, it feels way too big. Mm. Um, Mm -hmm. and this is, I mean, this is something that happens a lot. We see this a lot with couples, uh, where there's just something, a roadblock like this that just knocks them off emotionally and knocks them off sexually. And it's hard for them to get back on track or recover from an injury like this. Yeah. And this is what I take. It's a, just a little snippet of their relationship that you've told yeah. us. So, I mean, what, what I know from talking to you and reading this is that, you know, some couples, that'd be no big deal to talk with ex-lovers or ex-boyfriends on Facebook. But this was secret and this was hidden. And he he felt very anxious about it. And, you know, she... I mean, it isn't just something that was normal behavior. It was mm-hmm. an injury yep. that felt like a betrayal to him of their special bond. And the secrecy in and of itself was part of the betrayal, right? Because yeah. oftentimes betrayal is an acting out, but it, then it's a covering up. And the person gaslights the other and says it's no big deal or that didn't happen or lies about it. And so then it basically, I think, you know, Ben's injury feels like she's not safe. I can't trust her. The The ground I'm walking on is not the ground that I was familiar with. So we have a lot of sympathy with for Ben, and we understand this. But it sounds like, too, in the work with you, Jill was truly repentant and came forward and opened herself up to it and explained everything. But now he can't get over it. Yeah, and I think that's key, right? I mean, the the person that has done the injury has to demonstrate remorse for mm-hmm. it, right? That is almost always the first step. Before forgiveness can happen, there has to be some remorse for the action that was taking place. And I don't know that it's exclusively required for my ability to forgive somebody else, but for the relationship to be repaired, that remorse has to happen. And so that's what we're talking about is when that step has already happened, Right. Um, that forgiveness can begin. For, forgiveness is freeing for us, whether the other person repents essentially or not. Right. But for the relationship to be repaired, they have to be a person who is able to see what they've done and how they've hurt us and yeah. really, really stand in our boots. Yeah. But you feel like this is done, but but something in Ben has gotten tipped over and now he is almost compulsive about needing reassurance. Yeah. And so his lack of forgiveness has created part of the toxic cycle where he's preoccupied with everything she does and he, he feels anxious all the time and he's starting to dysfunctionally use sex as a way to, you know, ensure her connection to him instead of their lovemaking and connection to each other. Yeah, and I, and I think that's what it happens a lot is that it just kind of spirals into these behaviors. Mm-hmm. Like we were talking before about how the research says that you you can't, you have a harder time regulating your behavior, right? And that's what this feels like, is that he can, it has grown so big in his mind and in his heart that he can no longer regulate some of these things because I could see him demanding and I've heard this before is that after you take a step back, you go I know demanding to know where she is at all times is irrational Mm -hmm. or I know that demanding I can't keep track of her all the time and who she's talking with. I know that that's irrational. Like when you take a step back from it, some of these demands that he's doing, some of the behavior that he's doing, he probably can recognize that it doesn't make sense but he can't help himself in the moment. And so moving forward, being able to then move toward a place of forgiveness is going to be help, really helpful for him. And Okay, so how does he do that? So we got kind of five things that we just want to share about how to do that. And one is identifying his own negative emotions and then being able to share those with him, her vulnerably from a vulnerable position. Mm-hmm. And he is going to tell me, when I tell him this, he is going to tell me that he has done this. 
And I will say to him, as we explore how he's done this, that he hasn't really done this. Mm -hmm. He has talked probably more from a place of anger than he has from a place of hurt, right? And I think that's the big difference is that when you talk from a place of anger, you're more critical, you're more judgmental, and you don't get very far in sharing about yourself, Mm -hmm. right? And how exactly this has hurt you. For him, for Ben in this case, Part of it is going to be about the rejection that he feels from her talking to these other guys. Right. right? And, and deeper than that, perhaps his fears of inadequacy. Yeah, absolutely. Did, did she talk to them because I'm not enough for her? Yeah. Did I? You know, there, there's really deep things that he needs to explore and communicate. And she needs to be able to hold and comfort mm-hmm. for them to get through this. But maybe he's saying more things like, you know, how can you expect me to trust you when you get off the computer so yeah. fast every time I walk in the room? And that he's thinking, I'm telling you, you're making me not feel safe. That's right. Yeah, right. That's, and he, that's he, not a vulnerable sharing. Right. And it, and it doesn't help her understand exactly how he's been hurt. Because yeah. she may say, this is not a big deal. I'm, apo- I'm apologetic for hiding it, but this is not a big deal. But in his mind, there are all these things that are very specific to him of how he's feeling rejected and vulnerable and hurt and that he's not good enough, like you're talking about, that need to be expressed for him. Mm -hmm. And he has to be able to identify what those things are so that he can then communicate. That's what Gottman talks about with attunement, is that he's being able to identify what's happening with him so that he can have that. And then I think he has to also shift his perspective on on her side of things and without being critical or judgmental about her. Right. And this is one of the hardest things that I think happens because we're not talking about here condoning her behavior. Mm-hmm. She was secretive. She hid other rela- relationships with other men from him, um, whether they were romantic or not or sexual or not. She still hid those. Mm-hmm. Right. And so we're not saying that we're condoning that action, especially when he says this is not OK with me um, and it's not a part of their relationship. But if we can begin to shift our perspective away from the person being evil or bad or being able to understand that if we were in their position, we might do the same thing or that we've also done things ourselves that are not okay in the relationship. We can begin to kind of maybe see them more as that they made a very bad mistake here or they they did did it for internal reasons that are often more rational than we want to give them credit for. I I think like the first step you're saying is share vulnerably your own hurt. The second step is really try to understand and hear why your partner did it. And of course, that requires the partner having some self awareness Mm -hmm. and courage to be able to say, you know, this is what I was feeling. I was needing, I had a woman come in recently who had a sort of a, a crush, if you will, on a much younger guy that she worked with. And You know, I mean, it was it was blowing up a little bit. They hadn't touched or anything like that. Um, They hadn't even shared too deep, but you could just see where it was headed. Mm -hmm. And I said, and she's like, what do I do? I said, let's get your husband in here and tell him. And she was like, what? (laughs) You know, I'm going to blow up the marriage if I do that. I said, I know, but this is the marriage needs to be blown up. Something needs to be blown up here. We need to understand what's going on. And the loveliest thing happened when she did that is, first of all, he didn't blow up. He heard her. And it turned out that, you know, it was like she was middle aged and this younger person kind of represented the freedom that she no longer had. And as they explored it together without a blame and judgment place, he was able to forgive her. And I mean, they, they set good boundaries. She was also able to capture like what was really going on. And when she offered him that, that's what led to his ability to forgive. It was Mm. like he realized it wasn't a rejection of him particularly. He was like a great guy. And he understood her. They had great sex. I mean, there was so much good in this marriage. But her, you know, ability to to really think about what she she was doing and communicate that to him allowed him to forgive her. Yeah, and I think that's just so, that's such a beautiful thing. Uh, and, and and if I'm the one that's been hurt, I have to be able to hear, right? Like in, in our example, Ben has to be able to hear what Jill's perspective is and listen to it rationally, right? And listen yeah. to it and understand we're not condoning, but we're trying to understand her perspective right. and where she's coming from. We don't know what she was doing. Was she, you know, yeah. she lonely during the day? Was she feeling 
aging out and these high school boys remembered what she looked like. You know, who, you know it, it could be crazy. And you m- might say, well, that's still wrong of you to do it. And it is. Right. But understanding from the other perspective some driving need that made them act out mm. often gives us compassion and allows us to forgive. Yeah. And I think that ties into our point number three, which is simply that to approach these conversations, if Ben can approach them with gentleness and empathy without what Gottman, Gottman says, without fangs out, mm, right? Yeah. Um, and this is often, <laughs> I think, seen as weakness, but really what this is, it takes it's going to take a lot of strength, right, for him to be gentle and empathetic with her, right? Mm-hmm. And again, I want to emphasize, a lot of people see empathy as condoning the behavior. We're not saying that, but we're saying if you can approach it this way, the conversation is going to go a lot better and you're going to be able to get a lot further. And real quick, just because we're running out of time, that number four is just emphasizing cooperative goals over competitive goals. What do you both want here? What's the win-win for both of you when you're approaching trying to talk about these things to get to a place of forgiveness is being able to be on the same. What's the bottom line here? And for Ben and Jill, they both wanted their relationship to be better. They right. didn't want this to sabotage their relationship. Right. It's it's the booby prize when one person gets to be right and the other gets to be all wrong. One person is completely self-righteous and the other is the devil. Right. That is not. That's not a win. That's not a goal. Yeah. That's not a win. And the other thing, the last thing we just want to say is like we what we tend to do and this is what I think Ben started to do with with Jill, is that we need to stop building a case against our partner, right? Mm-hmm. You know those like uh, those CSI shows and all the, the detective shows, <laughs> right? They have a suspect board, that clear board that they have yeah. with a suspect's face in the middle, and then they're compiling evidence all around them I love with that. threads. I do too. I think it's so organized and I just, I but want we one need for to all quit my decisions. But putting making. different strings and pictures yeah. and events and stuff on that board that add up to our partner is really bad and going to hurt us again. Yeah. And they, we're trying to confirm their guilt and how guilty they are. And that just, it doesn't get us anywhere. Even if we can construct the perfect suspect board and have all of the evidence against them, it doesn't advance our relationship and it's not helpful. It doesn't make me feel any better, right? Looking at all the evidence of why my partner is guilty does not make me feel any better. Mm -mm. It doesn't help, right? And so we know that the behavior is bad, right? They, and Mm -hmm. especially in this case, Jill's already said, I know that it was not okay, right? I know it was wrong. And so that's, the guilt has already been determined here. And mm-hmm. so the idea is that we have to stop building that case because that's we just automatically do that, right? Especially in the present, we go, oh, she's on the computer. She must be talking to somebody else, mm-hmm. right? Or I don't know where she is, so she must be doing something nefarious. And I'm like getting that out of our head and dropping that ability can really help us uh, move forward in forgiveness, I think. So we know forgiveness is difficult, but we also think that it's essential for repair and connection in a relationship And ultimately, that that gets the boulder out of the way for a deeper, more intimate connection in bed as well. Thanks for listening. You can now call in your questions to the 4Play question voicemail. Dial 833-MY-4PLAY. That's 833, the number 4, PLAY. And we'll use the questions for our mailbag episodes. Hey, help us stay on top here at 4Play. We'd love it if you would subscribe and share it with your friends. And please take one sec and rate and review us. Thanks so much. All content is for entertainment purposes only and should not be considered as a substitute for therapy by a licensed